If you've ever visited Mexico, you'll have noticed that you see the same names everywhere. Benito Juárez, Jose Maria Morelos, Miguel Hidalgo, and many more. These Mexican heroes shaped Mexico's history and as a result, buildings, streets, schools, and even entire states have been named in their honor. The state of Guerrero, home to Acapulco on Mexico's Pacific coast, is one of these states which take its name from a hero of Mexican independence, Vicente Guerrero. As his name suggests, Guerrero was a fierce general whose leadership in battle was key to Mexico achieving its independence in 1821. And eight years later, he became the president of the new republic. And one thing that makes him particularly remarkable is the fact that he was of African descent. That's right, 180 years before our neighbor to the north, the United States elected the first African-American president, Barack Obama. Mexico has its own African-Mexican president. You can see this name all around you in Mexico. This primary school that's behind me is called Vicente Guerrero as well as the state in which he was born. At a time when people of African descent were toiling as slaves all across the Americas, what made Mexico so progressive to have a black president? I've been doing some research and I want to tell you what I found. I'm not an expert, so as always, I want to read your comments and if you have more information, please feel free to add it below. Please take a look at those because it will have more reliable information. Much like other parts of the Americas at the time, at the beginning of the 19th century, the Spanish colony, which was to become Mexico, was in a picture of racial harmony. A caste system existed in the colony, which determined a person's social standing based on their race and how far their bloodline was removed from the pure blood of the Spaniards. As you can see from this image from the time, there were several divisions from Espanol to Mestizo, to Cautizo, to Mulato, Indio, Moro, and more. Being of African descent, Vicente Guerrero was considered to belong to a low caste. He didn't merit the same privileges or the same rights as the Spanish-born elite, and even lower than the ind indigenous people here in Mexico. Vicente Guerrero began his military career as the struggle for Mexican independence was started in 1810. Actually, everything started here in the city where I'm living, in Querétaro. But that's a story for another video. Soon, the independence leader, Jose Maria Morelos, commissioned Vicente Guerrero to take charge of the independence in the mountains of southern Mexico. Spanish government, in an attempt to placate those struggling for independence, created a radically progressive constitution in 1812. It was called La Constitución de Cádiz. From now on, those born in the Americas would be granted the same status to the Spaniards. Now, I'm telling you this because what I'm about to say is going to make a lot of sense. Following the, the introduction of this reform, the viceroy in charge told Vicente Guerrero to drop arms, stop his revolutionary movements, and swear allegiance to the constitution. On receiving this offer from the viceroy, Vicente Guerrero refused this offer, and here it comes the most interesting part. The new constitution didn't abolish slavery and explicitly excluded those from African descent from citizenship. Although it did include a clause permitting them an open door to the virtue and merit of citizenship, if they provided a worthy service to the fatherland. Obviously, this wasn't acceptable to Vicente Guerrero, who kept fighting until Mexico was independent in 1821. So finally, people were independent from Spain, but Mexico didn't have any experience about how to run a country. So they agreed that the organization of the country would be a constitutional monarchy. So the Mexican empire, was founded and ruled by an emperor, Agustín de Iturbide. One may think this was bad for Vicente's ideas, but actually he signed a pact with the emperor called El Plan de Iguala, 
which declared that Mexico is totally independent as well as guaranteeing the same rights to diverse social groups, including those of African descent. There's a lot of history during these times. Mexico was a total mess. A lot of important events happened, but let's focus on Vicente Guerrero. So I'm gonna skip eight years in the future. In 1829, Guerrero had become a loyal warrior that a lot of people started to recognize him more and more. At this point, Guerrero had earned respect from Mexican society. He was so popular that people made the Congress annul the newly elected president and proclaim Vicente Guerrero as the new president of Mexico. At least at that time, Mexican people knew how to stand up for themselves. Almost four decades before our neighbors to the north abolished slavery there, the president of Mexico had completely abolished it. He also defended Mexico from another attempt from Spain to conquer Mexico, and he promoted the agrarian reform. But the most surprising part is that he did all this in only nine months. Some people in Mexico were so power hungry, well, some people still are, that just nine months after being declared president, he was dead. He was betrayed. Now, there's something interesting that we can clearly see if you look Vicente Guerrero up on Google. If you look him up, you'll see several pictures of him portrayed with pale skin. This is the most realistic and official painting of him. Just a quick pause to say thank you very much to my patrons for supporting this channel. Without you guys, I wouldn't be able to do some research about these topics or traveling around Mexico. If you also want to become a patron, I'm gonna leave the link below and see you there. And if not, don't worry, I really appreciate your watching these videos. I also have my social media here, you can check them out. Now I wonder why he was painted like that, when he was very well known for being the official representation of Mexicans of African descent. Why did they paint him like that when we know he had African features and when there are so many references mentioning his dark skin? It seems that at that time, they wanted to portray people as more European looking and maybe they didn't think that having dark skin was presidential. Who knows? It's clear that he didn't care about his features. He just wanted to have a fair country. I can't imagine the pressure that indigenous people or black people felt at that time for all this idea about castes. There are even documented racial phrases he got from his opposition, such as Efigie prieta y más gorda que un cuino y a su persona como un hombre que debiera ser porquerizo. 2% of the population of Mexico today is recognized as Afro-descendant. For almost two centuries, it was the second largest group in what was then the New Spain, second only to the indigenous population. So guys, I just want to know, did you know about this part of the history of Mexico? Are we progressing or going backwards? I would love to hear your opinions, so let me know your thoughts here in the comments, please. Even though Guerrero wanted to abolish slavery, he couldn't impose his ideas on the state of Texas, which at that time belonged to Mexico. It was the only Mexican state that still had slavery because of very strong economical and political factors. But I'm not going to talk about that in this video. Let me know in the comments if you want me to tell you this story. I think it's very, very interesting. Please let me know below and I will be very happy to do some research for you guys. Subscribe for more content about travel, Mexico and other interesting places. As you can see, I try to go beyond just the superficial, especially in Mexico, because I can give you my perspective as a Mexican. So thank you very much and see you in the next video. Adios. The president of the president of the president of Mex the president. The president. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> the person of Mexico.